Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. My name is Emily, and I'll be moderating today's session. Today, Jay from our customer success team is going to talk about remote support platform. Jay, I'll pass it over to you. All right. Thanks, Emily. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the remote support platform. Uh, basically, three benefits regarding the uh, remote support platform or the RSP that we use is that we use it to increase your operational efficiency. Uh, we do this by monitoring your system performance. Uh, we also use it to help mitigate the risk by handling the backups and reduce maintenance time through scheduled tasks. Now, these three things are done through different ways. Um, to increase the operational efficiency, we monitor your system performance. Um, we do this through reports on different facets of your system. Uh, for example, we can see the amount of RAM that you have, your CPU usage, your hard drive space, uh, the add-ons you have installed, number of UDFs, and much more. Um, and the system then will email reports to us based on this performance. Um, so, for example, if your hard drive space reaches, you know, 10% free, we will receive an email. Then it also helps us mitigate the risks by handling backups. Uh, the RSP system can and is set up to do your do your database backups. Um, but it also will send us an email if your backups fail or haven't ran for whatever reason. Um, the way we're doing this is it will send uh, the, the CST team an email directly if your database fails on the backup. Um, this way, uh, myself or Crystal will either contact your IT if it's a hosted environment, just letting you know that your backups have failed, or we will you know, if, if you are a hosted client, then we will we'll have our IT team uh, take a look at this and get it going. And the third thing that we use it for is to reduce maintenance time with scheduled tasks. Um, it's one of the neat things about the RSP is that um, it, it can do, like I said, the, the main, ah, sorry, can also schedule routine tasks. Like, um, you know, I've already touched on the backups but it can also do indexing and compressing and shrinking your database to help things run smoother. Um, it also monitors your database for issues and corrections that are already known to SAP. And depending on how we've got it set up, we can either have those applied silently to your system without no intervention, or we can log in and you know say, yes, run this. Um, this next slide here, just kind of shows an overview of what we see on the RSP system itself. Um, this is for our our company right now, and it's based on color systems. So like you can see here, uh, for example, our, our main one, it says business one is in green, that's good. The database is in red. Um, that is only because we have some test databases on our system that aren't set up to be monitored by RSP. So the system is telling us that there's something wrong. Uh, it also monitors your hardware and operating system, your business data, your RSP, and this this report kind of can be misleading because the RSP for 99% of the the customers it will show red, and that is just because based on this next slide here, um, it gives us all of the different tasks that SAP has you know, has sent to us saying these could be done. Uh, this slide right here is showing us four active tasks, but if you can see, there's actually 17 incoming tasks. So as long as there's an incoming task that hasn't been ran, that previous slide will show a red in that screen. Um, we are working currently on getting all of the data from all of the systems into one local repository so that uh, us and the CST team can look at that quickly and efficiently and work through it. We're planning on touching your system, uh, looking through the RSP data at least twice a year. Uh, we're hoping for more. Uh, and eventually we will be getting going through all of your tasks and rejecting the ones that aren't applicable and running the ones that are so that eventually everybody's green, light should be green. Um, that will take some time because as I, I will show you what some of these tasks look like but there for example there's a task out there 
uh, that SAP provides, that's for SAP 882. Until we go in and actually reject that task, you'll stay as a red. So now, and I actually pulled up a couple of the emails. So this is a the system status report that, SA, that the RSP will send us. Um, this, for example, is ours. And the overall system status gives you kind of a general uh, understanding of what's what's wrong. And again, it's in a different color coded scheme. So green is excellent, red is poor, and orange is acceptable. Um, you can drill down into each one of these different sections. So for example, this will tell us that we're running on 9.2. Um, you know, we have, we can check and see what installed add-ons we have, do a whole bunch of different things. Um, in the database information, this right now is telling us that it's poor because our log size is a little bit big right now. So that's something we should go and clean and, and reduce. Um, in the hardware section, this is where we can get a good good view of um, you know number of CPUs, the memory. This is telling us it's acceptable because <clears throat> we're running low on free space. It's still in the acceptable range, so we won't experience any slowdowns but we do need to go clean up some files there. Um, the business information section shows a lot more information that we're gonna use to help um, provide better support to you guys for you know, providing upgrades, um, you know, even just general maintenance. Uh, we can see the number of UDFs in your, in your system, which, again will help us determine the complexity of an upgrade. Uh, we can see how many users you have in SAP, um, business partners, customers, items, pretty much anything in here. It shows us, you know, how many, again, this is to help us to see how complex you are. Um, and then the RSP, like I said, this is just saying it's poor because we have tasks to be approved. Um, now, if I go to this screen, this is from a HANA system, which is slightly different showing. It shows a little bit more detail. <clears throat> Excuse me. It actually will show me, is it under database or hardware? It'll show me how much RAM you have and how much is being used. It'll show me your hard drive space. And this is more, um, more live data than the one for the SQL databases. Yeah, so pretty much we want to be using this system a lot more to help uh, discuss or and help understand your system more and support you better. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Are there any questions, Emily? There are a few here. So the first question is, do I need to be current on maintenance to get RSP installed and get RSP reports? Um, good, good question. Um, you actually don't. RSP is provided with SAP. It is actually required um, if you ever have any support issues with uh, SAP. Uh, we do need that. Again, if you're off maintenance, then you don't get those. But you can have it installed and it will provide you these tasks. Um, if you're off maintenance, we won't be monitoring it, but we can assist you in setting it up so that your IT would, would receive these emails. Awesome, thanks. Um, another one here is how often does Project Line proactively check my RSP reports? Okay, um, well, like, like I said in the, in the seminar, um, we are working on getting these all into a central repository and our goal is to touch base on each client at least twice a year once everything is cleaned up and ran and um, is in that central repository, it'll be a lot easier to even just log in and look and see, okay, these eight customers are all in green, everything's good. Oh, you know, this customer is in red, I should go check that out. Okay, um, and there are just two, two more questions quickly. Um, okay. The first one is, I'm running an older version of SAP 
Business One that isn't supported by SAP. Do I need to upgrade SAP Business One in order to install or use RSP? Um, not really. Uh, there is an RSP out there for all the way back to uh, SAP 882, I believe. Um, like I said, it comes with SAP and <clears throat> you are, you know, provided. There are certain things that if you are on a lower version, you do need um, to upgrade the RSP client just to communicate with SAP if you do have a, an issue that we need to submit to SAP. All right, and here is another question. Oh, there's a few more questions coming in. Um, okay. Are there any risks associated with running particular RSP tasks? Should these always be discussed with Project Line? Um, good question. Most of the tasks I haven't found um, are that serious. Some of them will have um, in here, it'll tell you what the task does and you know whether or not you should run it in off, off hours before uh, you know if you can run it when people are on. Uh, I don't recall seeing any of them that can't be ran while people are on the system or that would require something other than running it. SAP tries to provide the ones that are just you run this, it'll fix the issue. Okay. Um, um, and the last one here is, is there any data sent? Example, financial data, customer or vendor da data, data or information, et cetera? Um, no, there's just, uh, like I showed in that one um, slide, it just, it, it'll tell us the number of documents. None of the actual uh, information is sent over, like it doesn't actually send the database or anything like that. Um, if you do have a ticket with, SAP, generally we have to send a copy of the database so they can troubleshoot, but that's all done through secure FTP and it's just straight to straight to SAP and back to us with the, the fix. Okay, and another one just came in. Does RSP also report on issues related to add-ons? Um, <clears throat> no. The short answer. Um, it tells us which add-ons are running, um, and I believe if you look into it, you can see which ones you know are installed but disconnected. But it doesn't report on any issues or errors with that. That would have to go to the uh, the provider of that add-on. Okay. Um, I think that looks like it's it for the questions here. Um, so thank you, Jay, for a great presentation, and thank you to everyone for attending today and asking such great questions. Thanks again for attending, and we hope to see you at next month's webinar.